So for the next speaker, I'm very happy to introduce Dipti Bhatnaga, a very close friend. Hello, Dipti. <laughs> coordinator of the Climate Justice Program at Friends of the Earth International and one of the most inspiring voices of the climate justice movement. Welcome, Dipti. Good afternoon, friends. How's everyone doing? This looks so beautiful. Make some noise if you know how beautiful you are right now. in Mozambique, in Southern Africa. The temperature looks a little bit different than it is right here. But I also come from a country where 70% of our people do not have access to electricity. 70% of our people do not have a light bulb in their homes. But yet, we are a coal country. But all the coal which is mined from the land of Mozambique goes straight to the port and out of the country for export. That's the reality of the world that we live in. Our anti-colonial struggles were amazing struggles. They were absolutely amazing, but they made one mistake. <laughs> Instead of transforming the colonial state, we occupied the colonial state. So we have the same old system. We have the same banks and the same corporations who are now mistreating our people. And that's what we need to change. But speaking about what's going to be happening here in the next few weeks, the developed countries, the EU, Germany, are going to come to these negotiations in the next few weeks and say that they are climate champions and they're doing an amazing thing. They created the climate crisis and we are not going to let them forget that. They put the entire world on the development pathway of dirty energy, of export-oriented dirty energy, and they need to stand up to it now. paying the bills. Sorry, it's not going to happen. We need to stop dirty energy throughout the world and it needs to start with the rich countries who created this crisis and who are benefiting from it. What does that mean? That means drastic emissions reductions. That means finance. That means justice for impacted peoples. That's what the transition needs to look like. We just heard about Donald Trump. One example of a regime which is crushing its own people, some of its own people. We're not surprised by anything that comes out of there anymore because it's a regime that's entrenched in white supremacy. It's entrenched in racism, systemic racism and systemic sexism. But let's not forget, let's not pretend like this is only happening in the United States. We know the rise of the right in India, the country where I was born. We know the rise of the right in the Philippines, in Brazil, here in Germany, in the UK. We need to be really, really careful. We need to really fight against this. But you have regimes... <laughs> we have regimes all over the world who are protecting corporations, not their people. They are crushing their own people and others because of their support for corporations. The system is talking about profit before people. That's the logic of the system. These are not exceptions that we are seeing here. We are seeing a system which needs to be changed. It is too late for system fixes. The only way we are going to deal with this crisis is system change. also a biodiversity crisis, this is also an inequality crisis, this is also an unemployment crisis, this is a crisis where a large proportion of people go to bed hungry. Why is that happening when we have others who consume more and more, including our southern elites? I'm not saying this is only happening in the north, this is happening also in our countries, but it's something that needs to be challenged, it's something that needs to be challenged from the base. This is not about 
fixing what's going on. This is about radically transforming what needs to be transformed. And we need to deal with all of these crises together. Let's not pretend like this is a technology problem or a policy problem. This is a system problem. This is the logic of the system. And we need to be able to deal with all of these issues together. We need to be able to fight inequality and unemployment at the same time that we deal with the climate crisis. Because they will pit us against each other. They will try to say, I can fix this part of it, but I might affect these people, I might affect these workers, or I might affect this population. No. We need to stick together and say, we are going to need to change everything here. We, are need, we need to fight for basic dignity of everybody. And that means not leaving anybody behind. everybody has access to. We need a global energy transformation. There is no doubt about it. If I can say in my very bad German, we need a global energy vendor. <laughs> but it's not just about 100% renewable energy. This is about who owns the energy. This is about who produces it and what is the energy used for. This is about transforming the entire energy system and the logic of that system. I don't need to tell you what impacts we are already facing. The droughts, the famines, the, 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 the hurricanes, the supercharged hurricanes are already impacting people's lives in a terrible way. We need to address this right now. We should have started addressing it 50 years ago, but we have a choice to do it right now and we need to address it now. We are facing a crisis of planetary proportions and our response needs to be of planetary proportions. And what's the response? People power!